Welcome to the video tutorial Level 1 for Generation Project Part 1. I'm Lisa Stokes, an accredited genealogist professional in the Mid-South region of the United States. This video covers the elements and the requirements for preparing a successful Level 1 for Generation Project. We will cover the guide to applying for an accredited genealogist credential, the overall level one requirements, the research log, and the research report. Be sure to watch part two of this video to learn more about the pedigree charts, the family group sheets, the document file, and some basic submission instructions. Before beginning, be sure to download or print the guide to applying for an accredited genealogist credential or the Guide to Accreditation for short. This guide can be found at the ICAPGen website. The Guide to Applying for an Accredited Genealogist Credential contains two important sections that are very applicable to Level 1 testing. The first is the Four Generation Project Guidelines, which cover each element of the project in great detail. It's important to be very familiar with this guide. Another important section is the Level 1 Four Generation Project Self-Assessment. This can be found in the appendix to the Guide to Accreditation. Use this assessment to make sure that you have fulfilled all of the Level 1 requirements before you submit your project. Let's start with the overall requirements for submitting a successful Level 1 for Generation project. The first requirement is that the applicant links four generations that follow an ascending ancestral line. One easy way to understand this is through the relationships to that main subject. The main subject will be the first person on the pedigree chart. Then the second generation will be the parents of the main subject. The third generation will be the grandparents. And the fourth generation will be the great-grandparents. This is an example of a pedigree chart for a Level 1 project. Any ancestral line can be followed as long as it creates a direct ancestral line from the subject in the first generation to the ancestral couple in the fourth generation. So here we have our first generation, our second generation, our third generation, and the fourth generation. The objective of a level one project is to prove the linkage from each of these generations along this ancestral line. This diagram helps to visualize the generational requirements using the family group sheets as a guide. So for the first family group sheet, you will include the second generation couple with the first generation individual as one of their children. Then the second family group sheet will include the third generation couple and all of their children and then the third family group sheet will include the fourth generation couple and all of their children. The report should be presented in an ascending format, beginning with the most recent ancestor and working back in time to the remote ancestral couple. The main subject, or the first person on the pedigree, must be born 80 years or more from the date of submission. So for example, if the submission year for the project is 2020, then the main subject must be born in 1940 or earlier in time. Additionally, the first person on the pedigree must be deceased. If this person is married, their spouse must also be deceased. Keep in mind that it's not necessary to address the children of each couple in depth in the report. 
if extensive research to link the generations needs to be addressed, and there's no room in the report to cover the children, refer the reader to the research log and the family group sheets for more details on those children. Another requirement is that the main subject and his or her ancestors from the following generations must have lived in the applicant's accreditation region for at least one event in their lifetime. A record such as a census or a land rec record indicating that that person lived in the region at some point counts as an event. Although each couple may have had events outside of the accreditation region at some point during their lifetime, remember that it is a requirement that the majority of the research for a level one project be focused within the accreditation region. It's also important to ethically handle the information for living people in the report. If there are living people in the report, the names should be redacted with the word living or the word redacted or another descriptive word. Be sure to redact the name throughout each element of the project. If the first generation subject has living children, they should be omitted from the project. Remember, it is no longer a requirement to research the children of the main subject. Now let's cover the required elements for the Level 1 4 Generation Project. They are listed in the following order in the Guide to Accreditation. The research report, the pedigree charts, the family group sheets, the source documents, and the research log. Let's discuss the research log first because it's such an important foundation to all elements of a successful Level 1 project. The ability to create and use a successful research log is an important skill that sets a professional apart. Being able, able to successfully track and manage research findings is key to writing a top quality research report for a level one project or for writing a top quality client report. The required items to include in the research log are the names of persons, events, and records searched, repository or website information, description of each source, for example, the database name, the type of record, the time period covered, things like that. Next, include a call number, a film number, or a URL with an access date for each record that is searched. The URL in your citation can be generic, such as www.ancestry.com, or it can be a shortened URL link using Bitly or another program like that. However, this is not a requirement to include a live link in your research log. Um, it, in fact, we often encourage people to use the generic link, but a lot of people still like to have a, a live link in the research log because of their workflow um, process. Next, include document numbers for all the key documents. A key document is one that shows the generational linkage. So number the documents in the research log and the matching citation in the report. But remember, you only need to number the key documents. Some examples of these uh, items will be shown throughout the video. Be sure to include both positive and negative search results in the research log. And this research log must contain a complete source citation for each, each source entry. And the purpose of the search must also be included. Remember that each of these required items does not need their own column in the research log if the information is clearly found in the citation. You can use any program or system for your research log as long as the final PDF 
is easily read and it contains all the required elements that we just discussed. Here is a sample of an Excel spreadsheet used as a research log. Excel has excellent sorting features, making it easy to find and correlate sources quickly. Keep in mind not to let the log get too wide so that it will easy, easily fit into the PDF format when it's time to submit your project. Another option is to create a research log in Google Sheets if you prefer this program. It functions very similarly to Excel. However, it has the advantage of being accessible from any computer and the Google Sheets program is free with a Google account. It also has uh, pretty decent filtering features if that's important to you. A simple Word document will also work nicely to record and track your research if you're more comfortable with this sort of program. Here are some tips for using the research log to meet level one requirements. First of all, experiment with different research log types and styles and find out what works best for your personal workflow. Remember that entries for the generations can be combined together or they can be organized into separate generations for the research log. Also, submit the research log in a PDF format. Watch the ICAP Gen video tutorial research logs for more information. Next, use each citation in the research log as the master for adding citations to the report, to the family group sheets, and to the document files. This will help meet the requirement that all the citations are complete and that they are consistent throughout the report and throughout all the other elements of the project. Watch the I Kept Gen video documentation and source citation for help learning to write proper citations. The next element is the research report, which is where the researcher explains their research findings. The purpose of the research report is for the applicant to explain the research findings, especially the areas that need analysis, correlation, and conflict resolution. Use clear and concise language that's easy to follow and easy to understand. Focus on research findings that link the generations. Another purpose of the research report is for the applicant to show that they can present research findings as if to a client. Keep in mind that for the purpose of the level one project, extra information and fun facts, although interesting for the client, should be kept to a minimum unless directly related to proving the generational linkage. The last purpose of a level one report is for the applicant to demonstrate the use of appropriate research strategies and methodologies applicable to their accreditation region. Here's a list of the required research report elements that should be included in the research report. First, the research objective, then the background, then the body of the report, the summary of results, or um, basically that's just an overall conclusion, and then the further research recommendations. Here are some of the general requirements regarding the research report. First of all, the page limit for the report is 40 pages. Keep in mind that a longer report is not necessarily a better report. Learning to be concise is very important. The average length of submitted level one reports is 25 to 40 pages. To keep the report from getting too long, avoid putting documents in the body of the report unless they are needed for specific analysis, such as comparing signatures in two different documents, analyzing the handwriting in a document, or showing a photograph that's important to the analysis. 
Use a professional writing style and double check for grammatical errors and typos. This demonstrates the ability to produce a very professional client report. Also be consistent with the usage of first, second, or third person point of view throughout the entire report. So be sure to avoid switching back and forth between viewpoints while writing the report. And keep in mind that third person point of view is most appropriate for a formal report like a level one report. The first element of the research report is the research objective. Write a clear, strong objective at the beginning of the report. State the complete name of the beginning ancestor and any key identifying information such as birth date, birthplace, and relationships. Remember, it's not necessary to convey all the known information for the starting person. Just include enough information to uniquely identify that main subject in a specific place, in a specific time, and in specific relationships. Note that the key identifying information can be placed in the background instead of in the objective. Stay focused on the objective throughout the report and be sure to address or restate the objective in the overall conclusion of the report. Here's an example of an objective. The objective of this research report is to document the Flatford Gill family of Stafford County, Virginia, beginning with Lily Flatford. Research will then document Lily's ancestors for three generations. In this example, the uniquely identifying information would be stated in the background since it is not listed here in the objective. Here's an example of the uniquely identifying information found within the objective. The objective of this research report is to confirm the parents of John Jones of Lincoln County, Kentucky. Research will then document and link John to his ancestors for three generations. John is found in the 1850 census of Lincoln County, Kentucky, living with his parents, William and Ann Jones. His calculated birth date is 1835 in Kentucky. Notice that since the information from the 1850 census of Lincoln County, Kentucky was used as the starting point information, it is cited um, in the objective. The next element of the research report is the background section. Start by stating the basic information known before the research began. Briefly include basic information about the ancestor or the family that's relevant to the research problem. Avoid going into unnecessary details. Just stick to the basic facts about the project and the starting point information. As stated earlier, the, the uniquely identifying information for the starting person may be stated in the background if it has not already been stated in the objective. When it comes to the organization of the research report, make sure that each generation is clearly differentiated and receives its own careful treatment. Also, use transitions to facilitate the flow of thought. Transitions help the reader focus on where the report is headed next. Make sure the report is cohesive and professional with clear divisions of generations, topics, and subtopics. Use titles and subtitles as needed, making sure that they are formatted consistently throughout the entire report. To make sure that all of these organizational requirements are met, outline the report before beginning. An outline is also important to help organize the evidence and the sources so that strong conclusions are arrived at. So first, decide which events or relationships to prove in each generation. Next, list the sources 
found during the research process that prove each event or relationship, keeping in mind that some sources will likely be used more than once throughout the report. Examples of outlining can be found in the iCapGen video model for a well-written proof. The next section of this video will cover the specific requirements for writing the body of the report. The following videos at the iCapGen YouTube channel cover techniques and skills that are needed to write the report. An important requirement for the Level 1 project is to obtain and use original records to prove the generational linkages. Make sure that original sources are used consistently throughout the report when available. Indexes should not be relied upon for a Level 1 project. Instead, use the index to find a more original form of the record, such as a clerk's copy of the marriage record in a county court book or a digi digitized marriage certificate. Oftentimes, an index will give film numbers or certificate numbers that will help locate the more original record. When original records are available, but they happen to be restricted for download, be sure to use an abstract in place of the record in the report. When important original records cannot be obtained, be sure that the searches for these records are reflected and explained in the report and in the research log. So for example, if a death index gives the names of the parents and it is used to help prove the relationship, but the original is not available due to the privacy restrictions, be sure that this is well explained in the report and or the research log. Another requirement is that appropriate record types and sources that are suitable for the region and the time period of the report are used. This shows expertise with the records from that accreditation region. Also explain the purpose of searching specific record types. Sometimes it's helpful to explain to the client the reason that time was spent searching that specific re record type. For the Level 1 project, there's no need to explain the purpose of every search. Use your best judgment for a balance here. Refer to the Regional Resources document for your accreditation region, and those can be found at icapgen.org. These regional resources cover important record types, resources, and key strategies for your region. Another requirement is that as genealogical terminology is used in the report, it must be used correctly. Next, make sure to support each genealogical fact, such as the name of a parent or a birth date or birthplace, with a quality source that's cited with a proper footnote citation. The next requirement is to explain what valuable information was expected to be found in the sources. This is not needed for every source, so use your best judgment here. Another requirement is to properly analyze and correlate the evidence, especially focus on any areas that need conflict resolution. Be sure to stay focused on proving the generational links in the stated ancestral line. And also make sure that solid conclusions are made while writing the report. Demonstrate expert research skills by using strategies that reflect the following. Laws and customs pertaining to the accreditation region. An example of dress addressing laws would be to discuss um, a widow's third when covering her husband's probate in the project. An example of a custom would be to reference a naming pattern commonly used in the region. Use research strategies that show understanding of historical background of the region, show understanding of how major events such as wars or natural disasters affected the people and the records of the time and area. 
Knowing the jurisdictions means understanding the general history and the structure of the counties, the townships, and the parishes of that region. Also, be sure to show understanding of which jurisdiction was in charge of which records and where and how to find them. Use records that are typical for the region to show an excellent working knowledge of those records. For these strategies, make sure that the explanations stay focused on the research and the generational linkage in question. Avoid unnecessary tangents into these topics. The project must contain several transcriptions, abstractions, and extractions of the key records that identify or that link the generations. Translations must also be included for foreign regions. There's no need to transcribe every record used in the report, but use good judgment as you employ these techniques in a variety of ways. Important transcriptions or translations of lengthy documents can be included with the image in the document section of the project. Label each transcription, translation, or abstraction if clarification is needed. For more information, watch the ICAP Gen video called Extraction, Transcription, and Abstraction. As for source citations, remember that ICAP Gen doesn't require a specific citation style, but requires that consistent and professional citations are used throughout all elements of the project. Citations should contain the proper information that will lead to the specific source being cited. For a reminder of the required elements for a level one citation, watch the ICAP Gen video documentation and source citations. Also refer to the level one requirements listed in the guide to accreditation. It is strongly advised against using the citations that are generated from a software program or citations that are cut and pasted from repository websites. These citations are inadequate and it will make it difficult for you to match them throughout other elements of the project. Here are some tips for source citations. Place the footnote at the end of the sentence after the punctuation. When subsequent sentences state facts from the same source, place the footnote after the first sentence where the fact is first stated. This is not a specific level one requirement, but when there are multiple citations in one footnote, consider placing each citation on a separate line. Here's an example. Notice that footnote note one has two entries that each start on their own line and are indented for easier reading. Remember that it's not a requirement to shorten subsequent citations. In fact, it saves time to not shorten them. If you decide to do so, it's helpful to add the full footnote citations as you write the report and then shorten the subsequent citations before submission once the report is edited and ready to submit. This prevents the shortened citations from getting mixed up when changes are made. A summary of results or an overall conclusion helps the reader understand the research findings in simple terms. It is a requirement to write a summary or summaries that include the following. A recap of the research objective. A brief summary of important evidence and sound research methodology used and a brief review of the conclusions made during the research process. Remember that the summary of results is not the place to give new information. Also, one idea to compile the summary of results sections is to copy and paste the concluding statements from each proof into the summary and then revising them as needed. 
When it comes to the placement of the summary of results, it can be placed according to individual preference. It can be placed after the research objective as a preview of research results. Or it can be placed at the end of each individual generation to conclude that section of the report. Or it can be placed at the end of the report as a discussion that includes all four generations. This is an example of a summary placed after the end of the second generation section of a report. If you'd like to read this summary in more detail, please pause the video. The last element in the body of the report is further research recommendations, which can be included at the end of each section or they can be included altogether at the end of the report. Include specific detailed items such as film numbers, databases, and archives or repositories that could be contacted for further information. Be sure to give suggestions to solve the current objective, but you can also include suggestions to solve new research objectives. Here's an example of further research recommendations. Again, go ahead and pause the video to read these suggestions in more detail. Here's some tips to help prepare a top quality level one project. First of all, it's a good idea to ask an accredited genealogist professional or someone else working on their accreditation to peer review your project for you. Peers can help spot methodology or writing problems. An applicant will learn a tremendous amount from having their work reviewed and by reviewing the work of others. Ask friends or family to proofread your report, your pedigree chart, and your family group sheets looking for grammar problems or items that don't make sense. Remember to use the Level 1 4 Generation Project self-assessment that is found in the Guide to Accreditation or on the ICAPGen website. Check your project for requirements listed in the assessment to see where improvements can be made before you actually submit your project. If you'd like to learn more about the Level 1 project, or if you'd like feedback on your project, please consider joining an ICAPGen Level 1 study group. Study group participants need to have experience writing genealogy reports with proper evidence analysis and correlation. They also need to have solid skills crafting proper source citations. When you have most of the research accomplished for your Level 1 project, and you have some solid writing experience, please email us at studygroup at icapgen.org for application instructions. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the following email. Information from this video came from ICAPGEN's Guide to Applying for an Accredited Genealogist Credential, which can be found at the ICAPGEN website. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to watch Level 1 for Generation Project Part 2 to learn about the other Level 1 elements. Best of luck working on your Level 1 project.